this is my copper code progress report uh, part six and other work of course I own a 2013 Island Spirit Catamaran 38 foot and currently I'm on the hard at Reback Island the shipyard is in the top of this photograph at the Reback Island Resort After repairing the bench shaft, I cut the rudder in half and cleaned it up. And this is after it's been put back together with a nice smooth edge, fiberglass the two parts together. And the end I grooved out to give me more area to get strength into the base of the rudder. My rudder rebuild is coming along fine. All the edges have been fiberglassed and I'll put a matte strip fiberglass that into place. The groove that I ground out on the base of the rudder has been filled in with fiberglass and the edge that was smashed in and damaged has been filled and I'll do the grinding and bring it back to a, a nice shape. And, but that will also still be reinforced with a matte um, tape and another two coat, coats of epoxy put on before I paint it with copper coat. Well, the fiberglassing and sanding and bring it, bringing it back to a, a really good looking shape has worked. And I'm very pleased with that. So now I'll be able to put a matte tape around the edges to reinforce the uh, fin of the, the rudder to give it strength just in case it gets knocked around again. So I'm really really pleased with how this has turned out. steering mechanism has been cleaned up and tidied up and I found that this was completely cracked and was only holding on by the two bolts that secure the bracket in place that stops the rudder from dropping off into the, the sea so I was lucky to find that. I've had that repaired and it's done steel welded back up. I've had two new Delvin washers made and two spare brackets um, manufactured, fabricated. The pitting on the shaft is still a problem and we'll probably get stainless steel welder to weld up all the fitting on the shaft in the next few weeks. Starboard rudder. I've got all the water out of that and I've just plugged the holes with fiberglass plugs and I will do all the edges with reinforced matting so that it uh, gives them strength. a new um, panel and fiberglass it in. I intend to put the full length of the bottom of the keel, a new length of core and then mat over it around the edges and give it some real strength.
still got issues with the moisture levels and the vacuum cleaner is doing a treat. I've reduced the moisture levels down to 15%. All my tools, painting and fiberglass equipment. I borrowed the tables from the junk heap. My air compressor for grinding was a tremendous investment as well, saved me a lot of time. Copper coat is extremely difficult to remove. This is three quarters of my tools. The rest are up in the cabin. cleaned up and had the stainless steel welder do the swim ladder. The removal of the paint and polishing of the sail drive and fitting the new propellers just progressing. I'll do the o-rings and tone and flange later on this week. Obviously it's the same story with the starboard sail drive and the propeller. I'm amazed that the propellers cost $800 each from Australia and I've bought some spares from China for $250 each. So this is the plexiglass that I'll cut into 20 millimeter strips to put into the window gutter on the front bow of the boat to stop that water, storm water ingress into the cabin. So you can see the inner edge of the plexiglass window will run the 20 mil plexiglass strips that I've created along the full length of the inside of the window and down and right around um, to create a um, plug for the gutter. You can see the gutter in this video shot and that will the 20 millimeter plexiglass insert will fall into that place and when it's locked down it should stop the water intrusion during storms. I've cleaned up and I'm going to sand back and paint the flooring for the front hatch. As you can see there's three of them in each port and starboard storage lockers. I've pulled out the port and starboard 100 litre water tanks and opened them up with the inspection hatch, cleaned it out, it was full of brown sand and dirt from the build up of dirty water, so that's ready to go back in. I've used a pressure hose to clean the walls and floor and hole, the inner hole of the front port and starboard storage lockers. And this cavity up here is where the 100 litre water tank fits. It goes from the floor when the floor is in place to the roof of the, the deck. And then those wooden ropey things are tied in place. I'm going to put some foam of some kind or rubber to give it a bit more bounce. In there and right down is where the water intrusion is getting into the bow and I'm going to fit some kind of plate there, a fiberglass plate and fiberglass it in place so that the water runs off and down into the bilge. I've 
got given two 80 watt solar panels. So you can see the original two panels and uh, the second hand ones I got for $15 each. They've been wired together with an extra length and I am considering and probably will mount them on the stainless steel work slightly raised above the canvas awning um, between the two wind turbines to make them secure and then I'll have room to put in the area between these port and starboard boom halyards should measure and I should be able to fit in the two more 80 watt solar panels as long as the 80 watt solar panels don't take away from the production of the 120 watt solar panels I'll put them in in series to still keep the 12 volt uh, charge capacity but give me much more rampage Okay, the old mooring anchor is going to be grinded and cleaned up and painted. The Bruce anchor that kept dragging in the wet monsoon will get um, galvanised. One of the best investments I've had is this Rockner 25. I could have gone to a big, slightly bigger Rockner, but this hasn't dragged at all. It's a great, great anchor. As I said, I found some rust remover, concentrated rust remover in the rubbish heap. And as you can see, I've filled up I think it's a 20 litre rubbish bin that I also found in the rubbish heap with uh, di diluted rust remover, phosphoric acid in water. So it's probably 40 to 1. It's recommended a 3 to 1, but it's still bubbling away there. And pulled it out, laid it down to dry, when it was dry, I used Sail Bright Rust Remover on the chain because it's been soaking in the phosphoric acid. It should have been clean enough. Hopefully we'll finish the job off. It looks much better than it was, but there's still areas of rust, as you can see there. So I'm happy with that, just for a temporary measure until I get it sandblasted and galvanised double dip in Penang when we get down there at the factory. I found this piece of floor matting in the rubbish. Cut it to fit in the anchor locker to stop the build up water that's rusting my anchor chain. That should work. Should let the water run off better. 